Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the reactions of phenols. Phenols undergo a variety of reactions, as you can see from this. So they undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. They undergo Kolbe's reactions, riemann thiemann reaction, reaction with zinc dust, and oxidation. In this particular video, we are going to discuss mainly electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions undergone by phenols. So, as we know that the OH groups attached to phenyl ring in phenol is highly activating in nature. Now, if you draw the resonance structures of phenol, you can easily see that the electron density is concentrated at ortho and para positions due to resonance. That means that phenol will direct the incoming electrophile towards ortho and para position such that we end up getting ortho and para substituted products. So, let us look at the first reaction which is nitration and as you can see when phenol is treated with dilute HNO3 you get a mixture of ortho nitrophenol and para nitrophenol whereas when it is reacted with concentrated HNO3 you can see that both ortho and para position get substituted together such that we end up getting 246 trinitrophenol or otherwise called picric acid. Now, if you look at the first reaction where we get a mixture of both orthonitrophenol and paranitrophenol, we can easily separate these two compounds via steam distillation. That is mainly because they differ in their boiling points. Now, why do they differ in their boiling points? As you can see here, orthonitrophenol has intramolecular hydrogen bonding whereas paranitrophenol has intermolecular hydrogen bonding. That means paranitrophenol molecules are connected to each other via extensive hydrogen bonding such that you need more amount of energy to break this network and transform them or convert them into their gaseous state. And therefore, paranitrophenol has higher boiling point as compared to orthonitrophenols. Let us now look at the second reaction which is nothing but halogenation. Now here you can see that due to the highly activating effect of OH group, the halogen molecule gets polarized even in the absence of Lewis acid. And another important thing to note here is that different products are obtained depending on the different reaction conditions. For example, if we employ or if we react phenols with bromine or halogens in low temperature and using solvents of low polarity, in that we get monosubstituted product. For example, when phenol is reacted with bromine in CS2 at low temperature of 273 kelvins, then you get a monobromophenols as shown here. Now, if you change the reaction conditions and if we react phenols with bromine using polar solvents like water, then you can see that you get 246 tribromophenol where substitution has taken place both at ortho and para position. Now, why do you think this has taken place? That is, by simply changing the reaction conditions of polarity of solvents and temperature, we have got completely different products or we have got products with different substitutions. Now, we will try to answer this question in the last section where we are going to discuss this as a typical problem solving video. So, please stay tuned for those videos and I hope you are very clear on whatever concepts that we have discussed here. Primarily, the various electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions of phenols. Thank you.